Hi, welcome to another video tutorial from Polymath Learning Center. Today, we will be going through a question that requires the use of two concepts to solve. The question will involve the equating numerator concept and the grouping or number times value concept. The question is, Andy had some $1 coins and Ben had some $0.50 cent coins. After Andy used one third of his coins and Ben used 4 over 7 of his coins, they had the same number of coins left. Given that Andy and Ben had a total of $352 at first, how many coins did Andy have at first? As usual, in Polymath Learning Center, we teach you how to identify a concept before going through the solution. An equating numerator question involves a proportion of an object being equal to a, another proportion of another object. In the question, after Andy and Ben had spent certain fractions of the coins, the remaining fractions of the coins are the same. In a grouping question, you are given the proportion between the number of two or more items. However, the items have different values each. Thus, the proportion between the total value of the items will be different from the proportion between the number of items. In the question, we will find out the proportion between the number of coins Andy and Ben had. However, Andy had $1 coins which is different in value to the 50 cent coins that Ben had. Thus, we have to group the coins with different values together to solve the question. Now, we shall start solving the question. Since Andy used one third of his coins, we can find the fraction of his remaining coins by subtracting one third from a whole. This will give us two thirds of his coins remaining. Similarly, by subtracting four over seven from one whole, we can find the fraction of the coins Ben had remaining, which is three over seven. Since the question tells us that Andy and Ben had the same number of coins remaining, the remaining portions of Andy and Ben's coins are equal. Let's use a model to understand this concept better. Since 2 out of 3 units of Andy's coins are equal to 3 out of 7 of Ben's coins, we draw 2 units of Andy aligning with 3 units of Ben. We then add back the missing units to reflect the total number of units they have, adding the previously used 1 unit for Andy and 4 units for Ben. Since the 2 units from Andy is equal to the 3 units from Ben, we want to cut them into same sized units. The lowest common multiple of 3 and 2 is 6. Thus, we cut each of Andy's units into 3 and we cut each of Ben's units into 2. We not only cut the aligned portions into the new units, but also cut the missing units we have added back as well, so that we end up with the same units for both Andy and Ben. This cutting of the model is the same as making the numerator the same for the equation on the left. However, in order to change the two fractions numerators without changing the proportion of the fractions, we have to multiply the denominators of the fractions by the same number as well. Therefore, we multiply both the numerator and denominator for Andy's fractions by 3 and multiply Ben's fraction by 2. After multiplying, we can see that the original number of units for Andy and Ben are 9 units and 14 units respectively. We can now express Andy's coins and Ben's coins in the ratio 9 is to 14. Even though we have the ratio of the number of coins, we must remember that the values of the coins are different. Andy's coins are worth $1 each, while Ben's coins are only worth 50 cents each. We solve this problem by grouping 9 of Andy's $1 coins with 14 of Ben's 50 cents coins. We will get a value of $16 for each group that we group this way. Since the value of one group is $16, and Andy and Ben had a total of $352 at first, we divide $352 by $16 to find out that there are 22 groups of these coins in total. Since each group has 9 of Andy's coins, we multiply 22 groups by 9 coins to get the answer 198. And there you have it. Please like and subscribe to this channel if you have enjoyed this one and check out our other videos. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.